In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use this vehicle here to bonk the moon. More tutorials will be coming soon, including a lighter, cheaper variant of this mission, so make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified of when those release. Rather than building this from scratch on the video, I'll be breaking down an already constructed craft, starting at the top with the impact probe. On top is one Communitron 16, set to UHF Tech Level 1 and with a power of 33 decibel milliwatts. This is just enough to communicate back from the moon, even at its furthest point from Earth, and not too much that that it will drain all the power from the probe. With limited communications technology, the Communitron is needed for the moon, as the internal antenna will not be powerful enough. Next, the probe core itself. You can shape this however you want, but mine is a fillet cylinder with dimensions of 40 by 70 centimeters. This is set to be a science core using early avionics tech. I've tried to make this entire vessel as early tech as possible, so you don't have to wait around to perform this contract. The probe contains a barometer, thermometer, early film camera, and mass spectrometer as experiments to get the most bang for your bucks science-wise, and with 2,000 electric charge present in the tank, the probe will have more than enough electricity for a lunar voyage, even with all experiments running. As there's already an antenna on top of the probe, I've disabled the one on the probe core to save on mass. In RP1, and especially with early game contracts, you want to be making everything as light as possible. Otherwise, you'll struggle to get the Delta V to get anywhere. Next up is the TLI stage. On top sits a near-Earth avionics unit with a controllable mass of 1.47 tons, barely enough to cover the weight of this stage. Once again, I've disabled the antenna and have placed nearly 700 electric charge in the tank, which should be enough to keep the stage powered for at least one orbit of Earth. Sitting below are isogrid high pressure tanks for the AJ-1037 that will be used on its default config to propel the probe to the moon. The size of the tanks I have here will allow the engine to be burned for 1 minute and 20 seconds, which falls far short of the rated burn time of 1 minute 55. This with the payload will give me 3,203 meters per second of delta V, which is more than enough for TLI. Somewhere in the region of 3,140 to 3,160 should be plenty. So if you want to keep this lighter, you can remove some of the fuel from the stage. I know, however, the Atlas I'll be using to launch this will be more than capable of getting this to low Earth orbit, even with this extra fuel. In order to provide ullage for the engine and also to perform any required course corrections, four small RCS thrusters are mounted onto four additional small isogrid high pressure tanks. I've set these to HTP and filled the smaller tanks with their required fuel. This can completes the payload that I'll be sending to low Earth orbit. The launch vehicle I'll use is an Atlas using 1958 orbital rocketry engines, with communications enabled on the rocket's avionics, as the communitron on board the probe won't be extended until it reaches space, so you need some way of controlling the vehicle before that. I won't be going over how I built this, but if you want to see how it's made, check out my Atlas PVG tutorial. This vessel is essentially that, just slightly smaller due to using earlier tech. It will also be uploaded to my Patreon if you want to grab the craft from there. Now for the launch. In order to launch into the plane of the moon, open up the map screen and select the moon as your target. Then on MechJeb Ascent Guidance, hit the button that says launch into plane of target. Hit engage autopilot and watch as your rocket miraculously launches into the correct inclination compared to the moon. If you want a daytime launch like this, you'll want to do the mission between late March and early September, else you'll be flying in the dark. Once the rocket has made it to orbit, plot out a maneuver to the moon or get MechJeb to do it for you. Either works just fine and I use MechJeb's plot as a guide here, which I then completely took apart using Maneuver Node Editor to try and completely burn my TLI stage of all fuel. Coincidentally, the maneuver I plotted will get me to the moon in just over two days, compared to the seven Mechjeb was giving me. So if you're tight for time, have a play around to see if you can get there faster. Delta V permitting, of course. Then it's just a case of performing the burn. The main reason I wanted to burn all fuel from this stage, and actually was an issue here, is early game. A lot of the time you'll lose comms due to not having a comm network in place. If you're playing with the settings that allow no control with no signal, then you'll be unable to turn off your engine if you lose connection mid-burn. If you, however, full burn the stage like this, that won't matter. I was fortunate enough to get a direct impact with this maneuver, but should you need to make a correction, use the RCS on this stage to make slight adjustments until you have your impact, as upon releasing the probe, there is no way to change its course. Once you're happy with your trajectory, release the probe and watch it go sailing all the way to the moon to reach a fiery demise. The reason why there is no control on this final stage is all down to early game controllable avionics being incredibly heavy and using a ridiculous amount of power. You would not be able to create a reasonable sized craft to get to the moon if you want to have control all the way, at least not until you unlock some better technology. This overall mission cost 3,660 funds and the vessel was quite heavy at 120 tons, so you'll need a reasonable sized pad to fly this. It also uses a mix of integral tanks on the 
spacecraft and balloon tanks on the launch vehicle, which combined are quite costly. However, the advanced funding you get for the lunar flyby and lunar impactor contracts, both of which will be achieved by this mission, should be plenty enough to purchase everything required. As mentioned before, I do have another design which I'll be doing a separate video for. It's cheaper, light enough to launch on a 60 ton pad, and only uses integral tanks throughout. So you might be thinking, why not just go for that design? Well, it does have its problems, which I'll be covering in that video. I want to thank Winterfox and the rest of my patrons for their support. I have been Karnassa, and I will see you later.